Yuji was once a regular office worker in a company that worked him to the bone, and one day he died because of overworked Kun, the upcoming rival of the great truck Kun. <laughs> he woke up in a world with magic and monsters, reincarnated as a tamer, which was considered the weakest of all classes. But thanks to the studious and intelligent slimes he befriended, he got a vast range of skills and abilities, along with a second class called Sage. But he keeps it hidden from the world. He works as an adventurer now, and on his way to complete a simple quest, he fights a ghoul-like monster, dodging its attacks and then taking it down with the help of his tamed slimes, who shoot a fireball strong enough to destroy the ghoul immediately. Yujai returns to the adventurer guild with his collection of medicinal herbs, which shocks the receptionists and other adventurers who have been underestimating him. The guild boss says that he was not an ordinary tamer, but then his deputy comes running, telling him about smoke signals seen in the forest. Yuji contacts his slimes in the forest, and they tell him that they can see thousands of monsters heading towards the city from all directions. The guild boss panics and asks everyone to escape, but the adventurers volunteer to stay behind and protect the town folk. They know there is no way they can win, but Yuji comes ahead and says that he can do it. He takes out a giant dragon bone from the slime's mouth, and you people are better off not getting any nasty ideas about putting things in there. He says that using his special skills as a tamer, he can recreate the dragon's flame using this bone just once and wipe out all monsters. Everyone thinks that it is impossible, but a man with funky hair who identifies as a pineapple tells everyone that he saw Yuji's slime breathe fire and says that they should trust him. Everyone works together as they distribute medicine to the town people, and the adventurers take their position to keep the monsters out of the gate. Yuji calls his other summon, a proud wolf carrying the slime on his back, and he gives the wolf magic Red Bull to make him run fast. He himself is on high ground, overlooking the battlefield as adventurers use special shrapnel-filled grenades to kill the monsters, and then face them with their swords and bows. Then Yuji puts the dragon bone back inside the slime because it was just a decoration and says that you will get it over in 15 minutes using Sage's special skill called Magic Maker. Many holographic tabs open in front of him and his mind has some incredible processing power because my PC freezes with just two chrome tabs. While Yuji mixes all types of magic to create a powerful spell, he gets a message from one of his friends, who is a dryad and her team has spotted a shady guy. Yuji uses the slime as CCTV cameras and finds that the shady man was doing something using a lantern and a powerful magic stone. It was going to be dangerous, so Yuji decided to take care of it immediately, with the help of the dryad and the slimes. The slimes jump through a tree, and then he uses his skill to transfer his magic to them, and takes down the man with a magical net. Then he puts a barrier around the stone before dispelling the curse on it and turning it into a plain old rock. He asks them to bring the man back for interrogation, but he shouts the slogan of his terrorist organization before drinking poison and dying. Meanwhile, Proud Wolf has brought the slime to the town and Yuji divides them into teams to help the adventurers. He transfers fireball magic to them, and they blow away the monsters and pineapple and other adventurers are more confident with the backup arriving. The guild receptionist is spying on Yuji, and she is amazed to see him casting spells. But he asks her to call the adventurers because he is going to do something big. He tells his slimes to place themselves outside the town at equal distance, and then transfers his magic to them to create a giant barrier around the town. Then he releases a powerful magic called Hellfire of Demise outward from the barrier, and that blasts the monsters, the forest, and everything in its way, much like the gender reveals that get out of hand. But that was not enough to get rid of all the monsters, and Yuji feels weak because he had to sacrifice his HP to use more magic than his MP capacity. He has no choice but to do it again to save the town, and he casts the barrier and hellfire magic again to defeat all the monsters and then collapses. He recovers in a couple of days, and as the receptionist comes to give him food, he hears the celebration outside and learns that he is a hero now. The receptionist leaves him, telling him to rest, but when she returns at night to give him an extra blanket, he has left the town for good because he did not want to gather any attention. The receptionist tells this to the guild boss, and he says that the hero left the town he saved without fame or money. But he has investigated the man in the forest with the crystal, and he has found out that he belonged to the Blue Moon of Salvation cult that has been spreading its roots throughout the continent. Yujig has left a slime there as a spy, and he hears it all as he reaches the next town. His group is standing out too much in the new town, and they are all quite hungry too, so he buys them enough meat to make a vegan cry their eyes out. After that, he heads to the adventurer guild in this city, but they don't usually hire tamers, and Yuji can register only because he has tracking skills that are in high demand. As he looks at the job listing, a group of adventurers want to recruit him, as their party needs a tracker. There is a dagger user named Radis, an archer named Tina, and a spear user named Lisa. 
Radis does not like tamers, but the girls remind him that his reputation was not good enough as his party members often disappeared. They want Yuji in their party and force Radis to accept him or get kicked out. Just like that, Yuji joins their party and they set out on the mission to find the Earth Dragon who was hiding in the nearby forest. He uses his wolf and slime to detect any monsters in the area and amazes the group with his tracking abilities. Radis rushes towards the first group of monsters they find and kills them all alone, and then he says that his opinion of Yuji has increased now. At night, they talk about adventurer stuff, and Radis seems to know his stuff as a veteran and even offers to stand guard for the night. As Yuji sleeps, he dreams about the first time he came to this world. He was so overworked that he thought his system window was his office screen, but then he learned about being a tamer and tamed his first slime just by touching it. The slime led him to a cabin in the woods that was full of books, and as Yuji picked up a book, he found that it was this world's equivalent of a nuclear bomb recipe left out in the open. But he could learn magic just by reading that, and then suddenly all kinds of slime approached him, wanting to be tamed. As soon as he tamed them, they began reading the books and acquiring skills, and that knowledge automatically transferred to Yuji, who got a PhD without reading anything and became a sage. That was the beginning of his journey, and it has been only a week since then, and he has already saved a town. He wakes up as he gets a call from the proud wolf, who tells him that Radis was running away and the girls were following him because they suspected him from the beginning and now realized that he was about to betray them. He was also on high alert and attacked one slime following him, but thanks to his stealth skill, he was able to survive. Radis runs again as the girls chase him, and he dodges the traps in his path to go to a tent and report to his boss, a notorious bandit and slave trader. Radis reports that there were two girls with him who would fetch a good price, and there was a tamer he thought would die on his own. Yuji is listening to everything and he realizes that the rumors were true. But then the bandit boss says something about the blue moon today, and there was a prophecy that disaster would fall from the sky on blue moon night and even kills a man who dares to make fun of him. Yuji does not plan to listen to them anymore, and he decides to finish them with a weak spell. So he orders his slime to surround the bandit's tent and use the spell Range Frost. What is much stronger than Yuji assume and turns the tents into an icebox and the bandits into popsicles. The girls are shocked to see it and Yuji says that his slimes could do that on their own, trying to avoid any credit for it. The slimes bring out the frozen bandit boss, whom the girls recognize as a notorious bandit with a high bounty on his head. They are impressed and say that Yuji should have told them earlier, they would have relied on him. But he remembers that he already suffered a lot because of that and was not going to waste another life taking on other people's responsibilities. But he thinks that the girls are trustworthy enough to show some of his abilities, and they are talking about setting camp somewhere else. Yuji throws his slime into the sky with a sonic boom, and it acts as a drone and finds a good spot where the slime set up the tents, light a fire, and even prepare food on Yuji's commands. The girls are shocked, but then they go back to sleep, and as they sleep, Yuji can only think about the prophecy the bandit was talking about and the cult called Blue Moon of Salvation. The group continues their search the next day, but they find no clue about the Earth Dragon. The girls hype up Yuji, saying that he and his slime could find it soon, and he thinks that they are overestimating him. He suddenly remembers the day when he took his adventurer evaluation exam. The magic crystal to measure his potential broke as soon as he touched it, and then he cast a fireball that was strong enough to completely destroy a large boulder. The instructor and other candidates were stunned to see that, and he does not want that sort of attention again. So Yuji uses a magic limiter skill to reduce his output and tries it out using his slimes by using weak spells on monsters nearby. Though they are not lethal, the weak spells are also good enough to take down the monsters. But then suddenly, the sky turns dark purple and the blue moon appears during the day. The slimes tell Yuji that they feel something is weird and can see the storm and lightning up in the clouds. Then something falls down in the form of a bright light, and as soon as it lands, it destroys the entire forest area like a nuke, and then the purple sky dissipates. But that giant explosion was just the beginning, and the real danger is the giant blue dragon that caused it just by falling down. Yuji immediately orders his slime to evacuate and tells the girls that there is a dragon stronger and bigger than the earth dragon near them. Taina takes charge of the group and leads them to a nearby safe zone called the Delight Canyon, which had strong winds that kept monsters out of it. Yuji is not sure about the safety there and orders his proud wolf and gang to go ahead and check out the canyon. They find monsters inside, and using their skill-sharing ability, the slimes defeat them using just weak spells. But then a strong gust of wind almost blows them away, and they find its source hidden among the rocks. Soon they are chased by a giant red bear, even though the wolf is scared. The slimes take the bear down, and they come out of the canyon safely. Just as they inform Yuji, the ground under his feet cracks, and the earth dragon suddenly appears before him. The girls immediately hide, but Yuji decides to fight the dragon. 
He starts with weak magic and no element has any effect on the dragon's tough scales, and it counterattacks and throws rocks at the girls. But Yuji uses a rock bullet attack to shatter those rocks and save them. As round two is about to begin, Yuji notices something as the dragon uses a Pokemon attack by rolling towards him. Yuji dodges and then orders all this slime to shoot rock bullets at the dragon. That does not do anything, but it was just a lure. And as the dragon attacks Yuji again, he is stopped by a strong wind that blows him to the side. Then Yuji uses his Hellfire skill and blasts him for good, and as the girls come out, they find only the bones of the dragon remaining. They are impressed and Tina asks Yuji how he did that before suggesting an excuse that he must have used flammable ores below the rocks to blast the Earth Dragon. They go back to the guild and report that they found and defeated the Earth Dragon. The receptionist does not believe them until Yuji's slime bag throws out the dragon's skull. Then she asks him what happened to Radis, and he is also in the slime's belly along with other popsicle bandits. The reward for defeating a dragon and capturing bandits is too good, and all three in Yuji's party become instant millionaires. But this attracts the attention of the guild boss, who is a man with one eye and now he wants to talk with Yuji. The guild boss, who we will call Captain Eyepatch, hosts a conference of important and strong people in the city, and the topic is how they can defeat the Blue Dragon. Yuji is fed up with meetings like this, and he thinks this meeting could have been an email. That was a work joke, but some of you may be too unemployed to understand it. Captain Eyepatch asks Yuji to describe the Blue Dragon as he had seen him up close, and he uses his skill to sketch the dragon from his memory. The detailed image shocks everyone, and the priest sitting opposite Yuji takes out a holy book that contains the image and story of the same dragon. It was said that the dragon descended to Earth from dark skies and grew large, eventually wiping out the continent in just three days. It was defeated by a divine emissary who had the power of the gods, and Captain Eyepatch thinks that they can't find a warrior like that in today's age. But that he remembers that 30 years ago, there was a solar eclipse on the summer solstice, and when it happened, the priests in the capital's Grand Cathedral conducted the spirit summoning ceremony to bring forth a warrior 30 years in the future to repel the disaster. The date for the warrior being summoned was one week ago, and Yuji does not tell them that he came to this world then. The priest thinks that the ceremony must have failed, and the dragon could have come here as a side effect. But then the sky turns dark once again, and the slimes report to Yuji that the blue dragon grew in size, which he says at the meeting, and everyone panics. But Captain Eyepatch says that they cannot falter, and tomorrow at dawn they will hit the dragon with everything they have. Yuji can only think about this battle at the restaurant when Tina and Lisa approach him and tell him that they were joining the dragon hunt party for the big bonus that was being offered. They trust that as long as Yuji is with them, nothing will go wrong. As they leave, the priest from the meeting approaches Yuji and introduces himself as Style from the capital's Grand Cathedral. And he wants to give him something, so he takes him to church. He takes an old and unkempt dagger out of a box and says that God guided him through a prophecy to bring it here. Not even the priests know its power or true value, but Style thinks that Yuji can use it well. Yuji accepts the dagger and learns that it was called the Dagger of Kethis, which was unbreakable and blessed and could focus the magic abilities of the user on the tip of the blade. Style tells him that it is his now because that is what God willed. At night, Yuji again thinks about tomorrow's battle and wonders how many lives will be lost. The sky turns purple again and the slime tells him that the dragon is absorbing magic from the surroundings and growing even bigger. Yuji remembers the day of his evaluation again when he was told that his magic was ridiculously strong and he thinks that maybe he can defeat the blue dragon if he tries. He arrives out immediately and along with his slimes and proud wolf, he goes to see the blue dragon. He orders only one slime to remain on the front line to attack the dragon. His go and move Hellfire of Demace will not be effective at this range and for a single target, he chooses the Hellfire of Decimation and transfers it to the Lone Slime. He launches the giant fireball and blasts the blue dragon, but it does not work despite the dragon being weak to fire and holy magic. It only angers the dragon, who roars and gathers his power to launch destructive energy beams to indiscriminately attack Yuji, but he saves himself using his barrier spell. The dragon begins to absorb magic from the forest and grows even bigger, and the slimes ask Yuji if he has any more plans. He can only rely on the dagger of Kethis and decides to get close to the blue dragon to launch a powerful blow. They jump down the cliff, but the dragon attacks them again and Yuji blocks the attack using barriers, which shatter with just one hit. He lands safely and runs to the dragon, who is getting ready for another big attack, but Yuji throws a slime at him and transfers the barrier spell to it to stop the attack. He has gotten just under the dragon now and he jumps up using physical barriers as stepping stones and reaches the dragon's level, who wants to get in with another energy beam, but Yuji manages to stop it using a fireball from a slime. Then he charges at the dragon and stabs its eye. 
and then blasts his brain by concentrating the hellfire of the demise spell through the dagger's tip. He thinks that the dragon has been defeated, but it sends him crashing into cliffs with just a swing of its tail. The blue dragon is severely injured and furious now, and he gets ready for a rampage. Yuji is already in debt when it comes to his MP, and his HP is not much better, and then the dragon attacks him again. He puts barriers up to stop the attack, but it keeps on breaking them, and now our hero is in a pinch. He decides to use a powerful divine spell to freeze the dragon, but gets the message that he can use the divine strike spell in the next 45 seconds. So Yuji uses divine strike first and stuns the dragon using a giant lightning attack, and then he gets on his wolf and leaps at the dragon, stabbing its neck and then using hellfire again. This attack is strong enough and Yuji blasts off the blue dragon, who vanishes into dazzling fireworks and the sky and moon return to normal again. But as he returns home, Yuji does not notice that the residual energy from his battle with the dragon is having a strange effect on the surrounding area. The next morning, Captain Eyepatch wakes up Yuji and says that he learned through priest style that someone had defeated the blue dragon. It is obvious who did it, and Eyepatch tells him that he could have called for backup when he went to fight the dragon. Later that day, he has lunch with Tina and Lisa who talk about how the dragon was defeated and they did not get a chance to fight and earn the bonus. Yuji tells them that he is going to another town soon, and he wants them to recommend anything good to him. Lisa suggests a nearby town with great food, and though he is excited, he wants to make sure no dragons will be there. So Yuji departs for the next town and leaves some of his slime with the girls in case of an emergency. But on the way, he receives a message from Dryad, who needs him to come see something. He goes to her location, and she just wants to show him the mushrooms that grew where he fought the dragon and says that these mushrooms will help him unravel the truth of the world if he smokes them. Dryad says she can make sage potions and mana restoring potions of the highest level with them, and Yuji orders his slime to pick all the mushrooms in the area. She starts making blue potions with that because she knows the recipe from Breaking Bad, but she needs really pure water to finish it and Yuji teaches her how to create distilled water. Dryad begins talking about how they first met when she was in a terrible condition, and he saved her by sharing some of his magic with her. She told him that someone left a magic stone that stole all her power and the life of the forest with it. Yuji dispelled the curse from the stone, but then a lot of monsters came out of it, and he covered them in barriers before burning them down with hellfire. Dryad was really thankful, so she helped him by giving him the rare medicinal flowers he gave to the guild in the first town, and from then on she became his ally. Now Yuji asks her why the potion's color is like the magic stone, and Dryad replies that it was because of Dragon's grace, the power left behind when a dragon dies, and that was present both in the mushrooms and in the stone. It was a neutral power, but in the wrong hands, it could bring about a lot of destruction. The water distillation is done, and the Dryad finally finishes making the blue stuff. She is happy and hugs Yuji before giving him the promised potions and heading back to her home. He moves on to the next sea, but there is a thick fog in the way and the wolf picks up human scents. They follow the scent and come to a small village hidden in the forest, with a lot of people who are smiling suspiciously at Yuji and his group. The village chief greets him and asks him to stay the night here, as it is dangerous to walk through the fog at late hours, but since Yuji refuses, he asks him to at least join them for dinner. The chief offers him a half-eaten bun and some wine, and Yuji realizes he is not hungry. The chief then asks him how he came to their village, and Yuji replies that he was going to the next town, but got sidetracked by the fog. The people are staring at him, and the chief says that the people here are not used to travelers. Yuji takes his leave after learning that the village was called Messias, and he keeps feeling that something was really weird about the place. He continues his journey and is about to reach his destination, but as soon as it is visible, he finds that the town was covered in snow, and yet another weird situation awaits him. He walks to town with the weather suddenly turning from summer to winter, and the cold is harsher than he can bear, so he looks around his skills and finds that he can use an isolation barrier to keep himself warm. As soon as he goes to the gate, Yuji learns from the guard that the weather suddenly changed 10 days ago, and some people had even died because of it. The guard even tells him where to find delicious food, but the town looks as empty as my DMs. Yuji finds the best restaurant in the town, but they have run out of wood trying to keep themselves warm and have no hope of opening anytime soon. They cannot even harvest wood right now because it would give off more smoke and less heat, so he decides to take care of things by going to the nearby forest himself. He does not even know which trees they use for cooking and summons his battle axe and cuts down all trees in his range. He has turned the trees into firewood logs and finds that he can command the slime to absorb the moisture from them, and the wood gets ready soon enough. He takes it to the chef, who says the wood is too dry and its heat will be too strong for cooking, so Yuji adds a bit of moisture back into the wood and turns it into the perfect firewood. 
The chef is overwhelmed by the quality and gives a whole lecture about it before getting to his job and saying that he was going to prepare something special with this. Yuji tells him that he can have more wood if he wants, and the pile of logs in the kitchen is enough to knock the chef's stocks off. The slimes rehydrate the firewood to make it just perfect, and then the chef prepares the best piece of steak Yuji has ever eaten. After being fully satisfied, he hears that this was not even the best dish of the restaurant, but the town did not have enough firewood, so the chef decided to make something quick. Yuji wants to taste the best dish, so he goes to the guild where all the quests are about firewood gathering, and the receptionist sends him to the eastern gate to meet the firewood collection and charge Wadka. Wadka is a man who has dedicated his life to ending forests by cutting them down because he does not like the irritating teens who talk about saving the environment, and he explains how they could not provide enough wood to the town even with nearby villages helping them. Yuji asks him if Messi's village is helping them too, but Wadka replies that it has been deserted for a long time. That is strange, but Yuji decides to focus on cutting wood right now, and as he cuts dozens of trees with one swing, he shocks Wadka and all the other woodcutters. Then he asks about the standard size needed by the guild, and Wadka can only nod as Yuji finishes the work in seconds. He then dries it with the help of slime and gets ready to cut some more. He takes the wood back to the guild, where the receptionist is shocked at his skills and Yuji learns from her about a legendary monster tamer who also used to carry things with the help of his slime. He decides to ask Style about it the next time they meet, but for now he has to deposit all the wood he harvested after destroying the nearby forest. That will only last the town for three days, so Yuji destroys the nearby forests too and cuts down every grown tree in sight, making Wadka happy and jealous at the same time. The next day, he goes back to the restaurant for their world-famous stew, and there is a big bang of flavors in his mouth that is totally worth the hard work he did yesterday. What the chef said is that this was still not his best work, as the source of their herbs was being damaged by monsters who ate the best stuff. Yuji only asks them what kind of monster is before heading to the herb farms, and he divides his slime into two teams to protect the field and hunt the monsters. The search and destroy team finds the monster destroying the fields, which is a giant boar who looks like a triceratops. Yuji sends his fireball magic to slime, and they roast the pig harder than you can roast your friends, and then proceed to hunt down every monster in the area. But then the slimes find a weird brown crystal, and even Dryad has no idea about it. Yuji touches it to find out more, and starts to absorb his power, so he concludes that it must be the dragon's grace. Dryad thinks this might be the case because it was absorbing too much magic from the area and had turned it so cold. On top of that, she can tell that it was man-made because it releases human magic. Yuji decides to purify the stone with his dispel spell, and it turns into a rock. Then he orders other slimes to spread out and find more magic crystals like this, and the entire area is filled with them, and using a map, he finds that they have been placed in the form of a perfect circle. Yuji follows his instinct and goes to the center of the circle, where, you know everything looks fine, he gets the feeling that something is hidden here. So he tells a slime to fall back and tells Dryad to close her eyes because she is not going to enjoy seeing him destroying a forest. But she says that it was better to destroy a small part of the forest rather than let the strange magic destroy the entire ecosystem. With that, Yuji destroys the entire area with Hellfire, and at the center of the crater form due to his attack, there is an entrance to a secret place. He decides to go inside and eliminate the root of this cold because he does not want to miss out on the delicious food of the town. Yuji kicks the door down and finds a very deep man-made pit that leads him to an underground dungeon. He tells Dryad and the Proud Wolf to go back while the slimes look around and they find a high-tech lab nearby. Yuji wonders if this technology is really from this world, but then the slimes find something even more interesting. The red magic stones that absorb magic were being made in this facility, and then suddenly some workers come running into the lab, say that the current batch was a failure, and run to tell their superior named Jarvis. Yuji decides to find the scientist named Javier, and his plans to sneak around are ruined by the slimes who carefully hop around the place, so he uses the monster stealth skill on them to keep them hidden and leaves them to look for more clues. He goes back to the forest when two of his slimes tell him that they found the two lab workers before going inside a room. The slimes squeeze in through the tiny gap in the door and come to an iron door that can only be lifted by pulling two levers at once. On Yuji's orders, the slimes open the door and enter it to look for more clues until they come to a room with a ladder and climb it. Yuji had been following them above ground and the place the slimes come out of the dungeon is the village of Messias. The slimes find the two men reporting to Javier, the man who pretended to be the village chief, but was a member of the cult Blue Moon of Salvation. And they were using the abandoned village as their base to create magic stones. It turns out that the big explosion from Yuji's previous attack damaged their machinery, 
and now they can no longer create magic stones. Javier panics and puts together a team to retrieve the cursed ore crystals from the forest, and he tells them to kill all witnesses because they no longer have any need for this village. Yuji thinks that things are getting out of hand, and before the evil cult can do anything, he orders his slime to surround the village and be at some distance from it. The next move is to look for people in the village who are not a part of the cult and scout the area, but there is no one like that. The slimes find a library and Yuji asks them to bring all the books and documents to him, and the slimes gobble them up. The terrorists who were sent to collect the cursed ores run into the slimes and get trapped in the magic net. But rather than being captured, they decide to end their lives. Yuji does not care and orders the slimes to stick with a plan, and then some slimes report to him that they found a really tight door they could not open. There are no levers to open it, but Yuji notices the circuits below the five candles and orders his slime to stand in front of them, then blows out all the candles at once. The door opens and inside it is a treasure trove of the human skeleton who was appointed as a guard, but then everyone forgot about him. By the time one of the cult members returns to the room, she is shocked to find the secret door open and the treasure, as well as their research material, missing. She reports it to Javier, and their connection with the scout team has also been broken. The cultists are now sure that there was someone very powerful behind this, but one of them wonders why he has not killed them yet. Javier thinks that it is because the attacker knows about the cleansing flame that would activate if all of them were killed, and that would burn the entire area. Yuji is thankful for the knowledge as he was about to blast all of them off, but it seems that knowing it will make no difference. Javier is determined to defeat the attacker at all costs, and on his command, all the cult members kill themselves to activate the Cleaning Flame, a nuclear reactor that looks like they stole it from Rick and Morty. The reactor collapses, and huge tremors hit the village. Yuji tells his worried slimes to gather together and then places them in a barrier ball, before blasting them off into the sky. After that, he puts three different barriers around the village, and as soon as his slime makes a safe landing, the land inside the barrier splits and a dark green flame erupts. It is too strong for the barriers to handle and Yuji starts thinking of his plan B, but since there is no barrier strong enough in his skill list, he decides to make one. He combines cursed dispelling magic and ice magic to create a new spell named Total Isolation Array and encloses the cleansing flame in a perfect cube, which can effectively stop it. But it consumes a lot of mana and Yuji's MP is going into debt like my student loans. As the cleansing flame pushes against the isolation array and Yuji's HP is falling to cover up for his negative MP, he can only hope to come out on top. In the end, the cleansing flame bursts out from the top of the barrier and dissipates in a second, and Yuji thankfully still has some HP left. Just as he has finished dealing with it, the scaredy proud wolf comes out of hiding and Yuji says that there was no dinner for slackers. As he returns to the town, everyone is worried about him because he disappeared after he went to hunt the boars, and they say that he missed two huge explosions that looked like meteorites were falling upon them. But thanks to it, the snow was finally beginning to melt, and soon the weather in town returned to their normal state. The townspeople are throwing a town warming party quite literally, and Yuji is the guest of honor for providing them with much-needed firewood. Also, since he defeated the boar monster, the chef has prepared the best stew from the best ingredients, and Yuji once again attains enlightenment with just a single bite, and he collapses with a smile on his face. He wakes up in his room still thinking about the food, but then decides to check out the documents he stole from Messias. Just as he opens the first scroll, all the information in it vanishes because of some anti-piracy magic. This continues until there is only one document left with text, and it contains the names of people the Blue Moon cult was after. And Yuji is shocked to find that the last name on this document is his. A group of assassins are after him that include a woman in revealing armor and a masked man who is itching to fight their last target. The woman tells her partner that he will not do anything unless she confirms that Yuji is a threat, and once she does it, she will take her time tormenting him to death. As they are talking, the masked assassin finds him walking through the forest using his eyes that have better zoom than an iPhone camera. Yuji left the gourmet town as soon as he learned that the cult's assassins were after his life, and on the recommendation of the guild receptionist, he was heading to another town that was famous for its monster armor and would be perfect for a tamer like him. The slimes are also excited to go to the new town because they will get a huge power up there, but one slime tells Yuji that they are being watched. Yuji has already noticed it, and before the assassins could find him, he was already spying on them with the help of a hidden slime spy. They move closer to him, and the masked assassin uses his magic eyes to find that their target was sleeping peacefully in the middle of the forest. He wants to kill him right away, but the red-haired woman wants to take a cautious approach. She warns her enthusiastic partner to try something funny only if he has a death wish, and after a long time of watching Yuji, he concludes that he was just an ordinary tamer. 
but the woman wants to look over him for the entire day before coming to a conclusion and Yuji can hear everything they say and confirm that they were indeed assassins sent by the Blue Moon cult. He wants to deal with them right now, but if they run they would put an even bigger bounty on his head and he does not want that either. So he heads to the next town as he planned and goes to the shop of a famous blacksmith there. The assassins are watching him check out the price of some articles, which seem to be out of his range as he is disheartened and leaves the shop after being shooed away. Then he bumps into a guy and profusely apologizes, and then he goes to a fruit stall, acting to be too poor. The assassins are feeling a bit disappointed about finding that their target was even below average. The masked man is convinced that he is useless, but the red hair still needs a push, and for the final act, Yuji takes up a task to hunt some low-level monsters. The assassins are watching him, and he decides to fight like tamers usually do and employs the proud wolf to fight three bulls larger than his size. The wolf is scared, and he defeats the first bull just by instinct, and as the slimes cheer him on, the proud wolf realizes that he is still as strong as ever. Yuji remembers that the wolf was quite aggressive when they first met and tried to attack him, but got captured in the magic net. Just as it got captured, the wolf lost all its aggression, began crying and begging Yuji to not kill him, and finally got tamed by him. Now that the proud wolf has recognized his power, he takes down the remaining two monsters with ease and the assassins think that Yuji is better than he looks. This is going against his plan, so he uses healing magic on the monsters and makes them stand up again. And they charge again at the wolf, who takes them down once more. Yuji continues this again and again till the assassins change their minds, but the proud wolf is still determined to take them down. So he has no choice but to strengthen the bulls who chase after his pet. They are quite strong and now Yuji wants to give the proud wolf a boost too. But this is the first time he shows his pride and tells him that he will finish it on his own. He takes down the bulls and now the assassins are convinced that neither Yuji nor his monsters were anything special. But one of the bulls still has some energy and he charges at our hero, who instinctively summons a sword and takes him down, blowing his cover with it. The assassins are confused by his activity, but after building up the tension for a few minutes, they agree that Yuji was just an ordinary tamer and decide to go back to report it to their superiors. He is relieved and calls back his slime tailing them, they are still talking and their next target is a priest named Style. As they report their findings to their boss and he instructs them to investigate who was after Messias, Yuji is listening in on them. The boss also asks them to investigate their next target before killing him and the assassins start planning how they will kill Style and Yuji thinks they are too dangerous to be left alive. He commands his slime to use ice magic to freeze them and they react too late and become human popsicles. But then he wonders why the Blue Moon cult was after Priest Style and how their leader knew him. The next day, he goes to the armor shop again and the worker tells him to go away. But Yuji replies that he brought funds with him this time. He wants to make armor for his slimes and the worker tells him that his master Geigel is a great craftsman and he won't make anything for lowly slimes. But Geigel gets angry at this and tells his apprentice that only he could make the decisions here. He greets Yuji and then stares at the slime for a minute before scolding his apprentice saying that he was about to send away the strongest customers they had. Yuji is amazed at his evaluation ability and Jigal says that he does not have any armor for such strong monsters right now. He will have to forge them from scratch, but there is only one problem in their way. Jigal explains that he does not have the material required to forge a strong armor for the slimes and the proud wolf. The apprentice is shocked that the slimes are strong, but his master replies that the tamer and the monsters count as a set, and this was the strongest set he has ever seen. Yuji thinks that without the required materials, getting an armor would not be possible, but Geigel shows him the exact material he needs. He shows them a pearl-like thing called the Lesser Fire Dragon Jewel, and it was the best raw material available on the market that could be obtained by defeating a Lesser Fire Dragon. But not even such a strong material could hold the slime's powers, and Geigel tells Yuji that if he can defeat the rare blue Lesser Fire Dragons, their jewel may be just strong enough for it. Yuji asks him if there were the said dragons in the volcano and learns that there were a lot of lesser fire dragons there and a blue one might also be present. But neither finding them nor defeating them will be easy, as they are stronger than the rest of their kind. Yuji leaves to find them, but before that, he asks Geigel if there were normal fire dragons here too. He replies that there were normal dragons, but no one had taken them down in a century, so he advises Yuji to just stick with the lesser ones. So he goes to the Adventurer Guild and takes up all the quests related to the Fire Dragons, and the Receptionist is shocked. Yuji says that he will defeat them using magic, and she tells him that magic does not work on lesser Fire Dragons because they are protected by their jewels. But she adds that the dragons were very weak against water, and Yuji replies that water magic was his specialty. On the way to the volcano, 
he would have to cross the river that was filled with man-eating piranhas, and he took on the request to hunt them too. Yuji goes to the riverside and his slimes say they will ask for the way from someone who knows and find a red slime that was adapted to fire. Yuji tames it and the slime tells him that the volcano is safe today. Then he tries to find out about the pirate has in the river, but the slimes can't see anything through the flowing water and neither can they swim. So Yuji creates a new magic named Slime Net and sends them floating inside the river. The slimes find a deep hole on the river floor and two of them go inside to check it out. But then they come swimming out as a giant piranha chases after them. It gets caught in the slime net and Yuji pulls it out and freezes it using ice magic. But it breaks the ice casing and attacks him, and Yuji dodges the attack before shooting a fireball through his slime. And that is enough to get the job done. Yuji and his party continue their journey to the volcano, and now he has many fire slimes under his command too. As the new and old slimes chat with each other, they reach the top of the volcano and do not even realize that there were dragons in front of them until Yuji reminds them. They panic and even as he asks them to get to work, the slimes tremble in fear as they say that their mom told them how scary fire dragons were. Yuji has no choice but to face the dragons on his own, and he tries out how effective water is against them. He uses a mild water cannon on the first lesser dragon he finds and it dies just by that. Its body releases a lot of steam as it breaks down and the jewel comes out and Yuji takes it as his reward. Then the slimes surround the dead dragon and they are suddenly no longer scared and are determined to fight the dragons. They rush ahead of him and Yuji shares water cannon magic with them to take down all the dragons. As he thinks that the fire dragons are too weak against water, his slimes notify him that they have found a blue one. It is bigger than the normal lesser dragons and looks a lot stronger and Yuji orders his slime to surround it and then uses water cannon through them. The dragon gets a nice shower, but that is not enough to defeat it and it begins moving towards the slime. Yuji thinks that just water will not be enough, so he uses ice magic to freeze the lesser blue, but breaks through it too. He orders his slimes to all come together and uses the freezing magic with 10 times the power, thinking that this will get the dragon for sure. It melts through that too, and then collapses. Yuji has won the battle, and the jewel falls off the dead dragon's body. He thinks that he will get the armor made now, and after that, he decides to round up the remaining fire dragons there and spend the entire day committing genocide. He returns at night having killed over 200 lesser fire dragons, and the receptionist cannot believe it. But she is even more surprised that the Piranha was at the bottom of the river instead of the surface, and she sends out an emergency investigation team to find out the cause of his odd behavior. Then Yuji goes to Gaigal once more and gives him not one but two blue lesser jewels along with the 200 regular lesser fire dragon jewels. The blacksmith is shocked by the quality of the jewels and starts working to create some fine armor for the strongest tamer in the world. In a few days, he has created a collar imbued with the blue jewel for the proud wolf and a hat for the slime. Geigel says that it is his best work to date and tells Yuji to try it out. The proud wolf runs like the wind and feels as light as it too, and the slime is much faster too. Yuji wants to try out how the new gear works with magic boosts and puts mobility, stamina, and defense boosts on his pets, and they become 10 times as fast as before. He is satisfied with this test run, but Geigel wants him to try out his attacks too. Yuji uses the ranged frost spell through the slime, and instead of medium, he gets an extra large impact, and the two armorsmiths are shocked. But that attack did a lot of damage to the gear, and Jigal tells Yuji that it would break if he used spells stronger than this. Then he suggests that this was the best he could do using the material he brought, and if he could bring him a regular fire dragon jewel, he could do wonders with it. But Geigel is sure that no one can defeat regular fire dragons because it lived inside the magma of the volcano and only occasionally showed its head above the surface. Yuji is in his room as he thinks about what Geigel told him and wonders what would happen to the volcano if the fire dragon came out of the magma pool. But then his slimes tell him that the lesser dragons were going crazy. And he recognizes that this was the same thing that happened in the first town. He immediately sends a proud wolf and some slime to check out if there is anyone suspicious at the volcano as he has a bad feeling about this, and they soon spot two people climbing it. Suddenly a boom sound shakes his room and Yuji goes outside to find that the volcano has erupted and that the fire dragon who looks like Godzilla was standing on top of it. The giant fire dragon is roaring furiously and Yuji immediately contacts his pets to ask if they are alright. Luckily they are fine, but seeing the giant dragon from so close terrifies the proud wolf, while the slime thinks that he would be quite strong. Yuji tells them to keep a watch and tell him if anything looks dangerous, and then he sees that the two men are heading towards the fire dragon with barrels on their backs. Yuji sends one of his stealthy slimes along with them and hears them talking about targeting the fire dragon. 
They are quite confident that they can take the dragon down with just a few barrels of water because some people at Ordarian had told them that it would be an easy task, and Yuji wonders if that was another city. He does not want them to make things worse and casts a magical Nethrous slime, but the two men are skilled enough to dodge it, and he realizes that they are professionals. They doubt that a magic caster must be nearby, but since the slime is hidden very well, they find nothing. Yuji says that they will try it from the back this time, and that is something you can tell your girlfriend if she exists in reality. He casts the magic net again, but the two hunters were waiting for this, and one of them jumps behind the slime and attacks it with his dagger. Yuji thinks they were smart, but he was one step ahead of them and had another slime to trap them using his magic net. The slime that was stabbed is also fine and was just startled, and the two hunters wonder what was happening. As they are surrounded by the slime, they realize that it must be the tamer who was crossed off their list because other assassins saw no threat in him. But then the two men follow their usual trope, and after saying their slogan, they bite the poison vial hidden in their mouth and drop dead. Yuji asks his slime to look inside the barrels, and they find that there is something like the cursed magic stones inside. He decides to call in the expert and plants a small sapling near the volcano to call out the dryad. She says that there was cursed water inside the barrels, which was not as strong as the magic stones and could not defeat the dragon, but it could certainly anger him enough to destroy everything in its path. Yu Jing had thought so too, and he immediately purifies the water and gets rid of one dangerous thing. Dryad thinks she has done her job and returns to her forest through the plant and Yuji orders his slime to keep watch over the situation. They find a bunch of agitated lesser fire dragons, and then suddenly the manager of the inn knocks at Yuji's door, asking him to evacuate as it could rain any time. Everyone is running away from the city as it starts to rain, which irritates the fire dragon even more. Yuji is watching him from a distance and thinking about what the manager told him. The fire dragon had only woken up in rainy weather once, and it was not a pleasant event as the dragon burned down their town, enraged by the rain. It seems a repeat telecast is going to happen this time too, as the dragon starts walking out of the volcano and proud wolf and the slimes run for their lives. The dragon reaches the city and stares at Yuji who looks at the town people panicking as they leave their homes to be destroyed, and he thinks that he must stop the fire dragon at any cost. There are two rivers between the dragon and the town, and Yuji asks the proud wolf to check if it stops at the first river. The footsteps of the dragon turn the ground into lava, and because of his heat, the river water also starts evaporating. As the dragon comes to the river, Yuji waits for it to stop, but instead of that, the dragon steps into the river and screams in pain. The river dries up, the fish are left dead and boiled because of that, and the slime gets a free sauna. Yuji thinks that only a dozen liters of water was enough to take down a lesser fire dragon, but the real dragon was not even phased after drying up an entire river. As it approaches the second river, Yuji gives up on waiting for it to stop and orders his pets to get ready for a big battle. The slime and wolf are also waiting for his orders, and the latter carries them across the river with great speed and stands in front of the dragon. Yuji uses the range frost spell at medium level on the dragon, but it covers only one of its feet, while freezing the entire ground beneath them. The dragon breaks out of that easily, and Yuji orders the slime to jump up and use the freezing spell on the dragon's face. Not even that does any damage, and now the dragon is furious enough to use its fire breath. Yuji counters that attack by using the range frost spell with 20 slimes while looking for a more powerful attack to take the dragon down. He finds no point in dragging the battle any longer and orders the proud wolf to get back as the dragon goes to the second river and groans as it steps into it, then walks to the other side. The slimes think that if the dragon does not stop, the town will be destroyed, but Yuji tells them that they've bought enough time. This was the exact moment he is waiting for, and he tells one of his slimes to release the barrier it was maintaining. The barrier was acting as a dam to stop the water flow of the river at its starting point, and now it is released with enough force to sweep the dragon off its feet. Yuji had put up the barrier just in case the dragon crossed the first river, and thanks to the slime stalling the dragon, he could gather enough water for this attack. The proud wolf goes to check if the dragon was defeated, and since it was not moving, he thinks that they have won. But then the dragon rises up suddenly, and almost burns them down using his fire breath, and Yuji protects them using a barrier at the last moment. He orders the wolf and others to get out, and the angry dragon charges its most powerful attack yet. Yuji thinks that this attack could destroy the entire town in one go, so he decides to use the greatest ice-type spell in his arsenal. Using the slime with the powerful gear, he casts the spell Permafrost Curse, and it collides with the dragon's fire breath. They are equally matched for a while, but then Yuji's spell overpowers the dragon and freezes it along with the surroundings. As the ice cracks this time, it crumbles down without a trace of the fire dragon, and only its jewel is left behind in the pile of snow. 
Yuji is feeling weak after using such a powerful spell, and apart from the jewel, the slimes find another strange thing in the rubble. Later, he goes to Geigel's shop again and tells him that he got a rare jewel and shows the fire dragon jewel to the master armorsmith and his student. They are stunned and he tells them to keep it a secret. Geigel agrees, promising to build the greatest item Yuji will ever see using the jewel. Yuji then goes to the guild and asks the receptionist about Ordarian and learns that it was a town, but had a bad reputation because it valued its privacy over everything else and was hostile to other regions and visitors. After that, Yuji takes out the other object he found from the rubble and asks the receptionist about it, and she says it was one of the guild's artificial rain machines. Every guild had one, but the name of the city in this one was scratched out and Yuji thinks that it must have something to do with the city called Ordarian. A few days later, Geigel has completed the gear for Yuji's slime and he says that it was at least legendary grade. With a civil goodbye, the tamer leaves the town without even sharing his name, and the master smith goes back to his job. Yuji goes to Ordaria next and like the receptionist at the previous town said, the people were quite hostile and staring him down. He pretends to look at the quests posted in the Adventurer Guild but picks nothing, and two men go inside the building to discuss more about him. Yuji has his slime spying on them, and he learns that they were from the Blue Moon Cult, and they are talking about how he was on their assassination list, but was crossed off by the assassins. The Bureau says that he does not trust the word of the assassins and wants to finish the Tamer as soon as possible, but his partner Mustacho says that it would not be wise and they may end up blowing their cover. They talk about their recent failure as someone took down the Fire Dragon despite everything they could do to agitate it, and they want to inform their master Walter about this. As Yuji is wondering about all this, Priest Style and his young disciple approach him and take him to church, where they want to tell him something important. Style says another revelation brought him here, and he was waiting for Yuji, and even though the guild here was under Blue Moon's control, they were safe inside the church. He tells the priest that he was on their hit list, but he knows it all and decides to tell him about his past with a man named Walter. Style was once a part of a religious organization called the Church of Blue Moon and was quite a gangster in his younger days. They gained followers amongst the people marginalized by society, and that was how Walter joined them and soon became his right-hand man. He acted to be devout, but he actually had great ambitions and needed to get rid of Style to fulfill him. One day, the priest had a revelation from God asking him to dismantle the Church of Blue Moon, but he was unable to abandon his comrades and did not follow the revelation. A few days later, the church was attacked by a violent group led by Walter, and everyone in power except Style died. Walter took over the church, twisted it into a terrorist cult using his propaganda, made the followers believe his principles to the extreme, and declared that he would cleanse the world. This is what Style came here to tell Yuji, as he feels responsible for this mess, and on top of that, he had another revelation recently that told him about a tainted light creating chaos and instructed him to guide the Divine Emissary to regain his grace. Since Yuji could wield the Dagger of Kethis, he qualified to be God's representative and the world's hero, and he would have to face Walter eventually. But Style did some crucial part of the revelation from him, and said that the death of the guide will bring forth the stage, and he believes that Yuji would hesitate if he knew this. Yuji is thinking about the story in his bed when he thinks that Style was just pushing him onto the job of the Divine Warrior and talking about the legends. But talking about legends, he remembers what the receptionist girl told him about the legendary Tamer, and he wants to ask that of the priest tomorrow. Style is not in the church, and Yuji decides to ask his slimes if they have seen him leave the town. One of the slime pairs has seen two priests enter the deep forest early in the morning, and Yuji tells them to follow the priests. Style and his assistant find a dark barrier in front of them, and he purifies it using divine magic to enter it and come to the headquarters of the Blue Moon Cult, which is like the last boss's residence in a video game. Yuji follows their trail and comes to the cave with a dark barrier. The slimes are scared, but he dispels the cursed barrier in one swoop and enters the cave to find a group of terrorists knocked out cold. A few minutes before Yuji arrived at the scene, Style and his disciple enter the cave, and they are now surrounded by armed guards. The priest remembers his glory days and strengthens his body with magic before knocking out the guards with martial arts. He then goes to the boss room, where Walter and his men are waiting for him, and there too, he shows off how skilled he is at fighting and takes down all the minions. But as he is talking with Walter about fulfilling his destiny here, his assistant betrays him by binding and knocking him out. He was a part of the Blue Moon cult all along and led style here, hoping to lure the hero with him too. The priest had only given Yuji the dagger to fight the blue dragon, but he did everything else on his own and attacked a lot of the cult's henchmen, which made him their enemy. Walter says that it is all pointless now as their plan has already moved on to the final stage, and with the help of their god and the new way to access his powers, they will change the world as they like it. As Walter gives his traditional villain speech, Style says that Yuji will surely come, 
and if his death is what will motivate him to save the world, he is ready to die. Walter grants his wish and uses arcane magic to unleash the curse on all of his henchmen, who turn into mindless ghoul monsters and Style is horrified at how cruel he could be. But the villain laughs, and as the priest is going to die at the hands of his former assistant, Yuji breaks into the room with a loud bang. He has defeated all the ghoul monsters on the way, and though one asks something from the priest, he sees that it is not the right time for that. Johan immediately shifts his attention to the bigger threat and shoots a fireball at Yuji, who blocks it using just a simple barrier before dispelling the magic rope around the priest. They have a little small talk about this situation before Style introduces Walter to him, who was eager to meet the hero. As the villain engages them in conversation, his magic cyberpunk device has completed its job, and as the energy flowing through the circuits in the place stabilizes, he commands his ghoul subordinates to attack Yuji. They leap at him, but he uses his slimes to blast them all away using fireballs and using that opportunity, Walter moves deeper into his castle and shuts the door behind him. He goes to his throne room and sits on his specially made magic chair, which dopes him with all the magic he has stored and enlarges his muscles and tattoos. I wish they had one of them at every gym. Just as Walter is about to complete his power up, Yuji and the priests come into the room, and he tells them to witness his transformation. He transforms into a ghoul-like monster himself as the castle begins to rattle. Yuji decides to finish it early by shooting a fireball at him, but by now Walter has become the ghoul king, and that attack did nothing to him. He attacks Yuji and creates a huge impact with just one punch, but the proud wolf saves him. Yuji notices that the villain has infused himself with the dragon's grace, and his transformation is not complete. He sprouts wings, a third eye, and horns. His claws become large, and even a tail comes out of his rear as he transforms from the ghoul king to a ghoul dragon. He charges a laser beam to shoot at his old friend, but Yuji blocks it using his barriers, and since that does not work, Walter leaps in for a physical attack, but Yuji has placed a slime to launch a fireball at him from below. He is much faster now, and he dodges the attack and begins flying above them telling them to witness the power of the great dragon. Yuji thinks that his enemy is going to dodge individual attacks every time, so he commands the proud wolf to leap ahead and throw the slimes in the air, that he launches a fireball barrage on Walter, who is fast enough to dodge the fireballs raining on him. Yuji adds another unit to shoot him from the front, and after a few missed shots, they hit him. But Walter is too strong to be defeated by such small spells, and Yuji decides to pull out his secret weapon. He tosses one slime towards the proud wolf and protects it from the villain's energy blast as it takes out the special armor and puts it on. Both the geared monsters are ready to take on the final boss and Yuji boosts their physical and magic abilities. The proud wolf speeds through the cave, jumping and attacking Walter fast enough to put him on the back foot. The wolf lures him into position and the slime with armor jumps up and Yuji launches a fireball through him that is too huge even for Walter to resist it and gives blast it into the ground. He gets up again despite looking like a cookie left half-eaten by a toddler, but then he notices his fallen subordinates and absorbs their energy to heal himself. He flies towards Yuji again, who launches another fireball, taking down one of Walter's arms, who not only heals it immediately but also grows another pair by absorbing the energy of his fallen comrades. He has grown stronger and faster and Yuji blasts him with fireballs from all angles, but that has no effect as he heals too fast. Yuji thinks that this was because the dragon's grace was too powerful, but then he has an idea and escapes on the proud wolf's back as Walter attacks him. Yuji rides ahead, and as Walter follows him, he keeps on distracting him with fireballs and makes him use the energy of his comrades to heal himself. But just as Walter does that, Yuji uses the Cursed Dispel spell and turns his healing legs into rocks. The villain is shocked, but he still continues with his attack and launches a barrage of punches at Yuji, who is protected by his barriers. But the punches are too strong and start to crush the ground and crack the barriers, and just as the barriers were going to shatter, the slimes informed Yuji that they were ready for the next plan. As Walter plays ball with the barrier sphere, the slimes launch a magical net at him. The first one immobilizes him, and then Yuji surrounds him with a magical net from all sides and turns Walter into a poorly made mummy. Then he uses Hellfire of Decimation and defeats the villain, who burns and is left with less than half of his body after the last attack. He laughs, saying that it does not matter who wins, and prays to his god to make the true revelation right now. Walter dies with that, and as the slimes celebrate, Yuji thinks this was too easy and Style agrees with him. He says that something was suspicious about this, and then suddenly he is proven right. The machines and the magic circuit that was spread throughout the castle activate and begin to absorb all of the dragon's grace from Walter and his dead henchmen. The energy gathers at the top of the cave system, and a bright light reduces into a falling star, which transforms into a humanoid as it lands. 
It is a human and dragon mixtape and proclaims himself to be the sage. Yuji asks Style if that was Walter, and the priest tells him that there was the last part of the revelation he did not tell him. It mentioned the death of the guide to bring forth the sage, and he was prepared to die in order to make Yuji into the sage who would save the world. But it seems that he was wrong, and it was Walter who would die to bring out the corrupted sage. Yuji asks Style who was the sage, and he replies that when the divine emissary fought the blue dragon in ancient times, he lost his life along with the dragon. And Walter sacrificed his life and that of his henchmen to reincarnate him using something like the spirit summoning ceremony. But Style says that there is nothing divine about the sage right now. The corrupt sage uses the hellfire of demise and destroys the entire area. But somehow Yuji was able to protect himself despite being shocked that his favorite attack was used against him. The entire forest above the castle has been turned into a lavascape, and as the corrupt sages take to the sky, Yuji decides to face him. He puts all types of boosts on his pets, and then the proud wolf takes the slime up to attack the corrupted sage, but he easily blocks the fireball and counterattacks with hellfire decimation. Proud Wolf barely dodges the attack that could definitely have killed him a hundred times over and Yuji orders his slimes to split up. They jump around using physical barriers and then he uses a fireball barrage on the corrupt sage who blocks all the attacks with fast movements and a single barrier. He is about to attack an annoying slime with hellfire, but Yuji saves it using the monster stealth skill and then attacks the sage with a gear-powered fireball, but he blocks that too. Now our hero thinks that he will run out of MP at this rate, and his enemies seem to have infinite mana guessing by the rate he spammed Hellfire. So he orders his slimes to unite and uses the ranged frost spell at full power. But the corrupt sage protects himself using a barrier shield, and then shatters the ice around him. Yuji immediately attacks him again with multiple fireballs fused into one giant attack, and that throws him to the ground. But even that was not able to do anything. The Corrupted Sage uses the Hellfire spell by amplifying it ten times and Yuji does the same. As their attacks of equal power collide, Yuji eventually wins and blasts the Corrupted Sage, but he has lost too much MP and thinks that he cannot fight like this any longer. However, the villain has not even been scratched by the previous attack, and he says that it was time to bring salvation upon the world as he decides to use his greatest trick. He gathers the dragon's grace remaining in the area and concentrates it into a ball before dispersing it all over the continent and charging the artificial rain machines with it. Soon, dark purple clouds cover the entire region, and the rain that falls from them makes monsters everywhere go feral. Everyone in different towns is having trouble facing the agitated monsters, and Yuji helps them out with the slime he left behind. The corrupted sage floats up and calls Yuji the young sage, saying how he lost his life while trying to stop the dragon, and it filled his soul with pain and regret. He says that no matter how many sages are born, stronger dragons will come and plunge this world into chaos. So he wants to save the world from that by destroying himself, and Yuji understands that his opponent is just crazy. The corrupted sage attacks him with hellfire, and since Yuji's barrier can't protect him for long, he counters it with his own hellfire. Their fight creates nuclear fireworks in the sky, and as Style is amazed by seeing them fight, he receives another revelation. Yuji is struggling with his own battle, but his slime tells him that monsters are attacking every town he visited, and he feels obliged to help them. The corrupted sage scoffs, saying his power would not be enough to save the world, and as Yuji holds him back, he does some multitasking only to conclude that he can't save everyone. But it turns out that his heroic actions of the past have motivated everyone he met, and they are determined to protect their home with their own power. Yuji is relieved, and he realizes that in his past life, he always shouldered every burden alone and did not ask anyone for help. That became his habit, and he acted on his own even in this world. But now he thinks that having other people share his workload is not bad. He decides to support his allies and casts all sorts of physical and magical boosts on them, and they have become stronger enough to defend their towns. Now that everyone is set, Yuji wants to focus on his battle with the final villain, but before that, he gets a message from Style, who says that the god was angry, and when the sun and moon would meet, he would deliver his judgment. Yuji thinks he cannot wait for God's help and drinks the mana restoration potion given by the Dryad, returning to peak form. He tells the proud wolf to take care of Style while he jumps up using barriers to come face to face with the corrupted sage, who asked him why he was resisting the path of salvation. He asks Yuji why he was so intent on saving this world, and he thinks about the friends he made here and how this world did not need a new path. The corrupted sage likes his answer and says that, as sages, they should duel it out until only one of them remains, but he is confident that he will win. Both of them use hellfire over and over again, and the corrupted sage says that there is a limit to how much magic a human body can handle. On the other hand, 
He does not have such limits. Yuji knows that this was the truth, but then he gets a message that the Divine Strike spell could be used, and he wonders if this was the judgment style found out in the Revelation. Since he has used this skill once against the Blue Dragon, he uses it again without hesitation and strikes the corrupt Sage with Divine Lightning and slams him onto the ground. The system screen is still showing that he can use Divine Strike, so Yuji decides to spam it as much as he can, and at the end of it, the corrupted Sage is still standing although he is suffering from the stunning effect of the Divine Strike. Yuji decides to use something more potent to kill him and orders his slime to get into formation, while the Corrupted Sage also prepares his greatest attack. Yuji tosses the Dagger of Kethys into the sky and uses Divine Strike on it, making the dark clouds clear as the dagger shines brightly. And at the same time, the moon completely eclipses the sun, fulfilling the first part of the revelation style just had. Yuji takes the dagger and jumps down towards the Corrupted Sage, who is about to launch his ultimate attack when he is enclosed in six layers of barriers. But those layers crack easily and Yuji uses the power of the Fire Dragon Jewel Gear to cast a powerful isolation array to capture himself and the Corrupted Sage inside it. And then he stabs the Corrupted Sage with a charged dagger and releases the energy of the Divine Strike inside his body. He cannot bear all that energy and begins to crack as he finally explodes, destroying the indestructible isolation array with him, and the powerful boom the explosion creates clears the clouds over the entire continent. Yuji is unharmed even after that powerful explosion and glows in golden light as he descends like a true emissary of the gods. Style can only stare at him in awe, and just as he touches the ground, he collapses but still has his consciousness. He smiles, thinking that the world has finally been saved. He does not stay back to celebrate because Ordarian was the stronghold of the Blue Moon cult. They would not be in a mood to party after their defeat. He confirms the status of other towns from his slimes and everyone is celebrating their victory. The slimes with Yuji also dance in joy, and he thinks that it was a good thing everyone was having fun. A few days have passed since the battle, but despite defeating the reanimated sage, our hero has not even made a dent in the true depths of the Blue Moon cult. The men in Ordarian are holding a meeting and their superior thinks that the death of Walter was not a big deal as their final weapon, codenamed the Purifier, was complete. It was not even comparable to a nuclear reactor anymore and had already become something out of sci-fi movies. Once it exploded, it would take the entire continent with it. The man in charge of this continent says that their lives will end when they detonate the Purifier, but it was a necessary sacrifice. They would have to make so that they can reach their end goal and defeat the Black Dragon of Ruin. This was the true mission of the Blue Moon cult, and they would not hesitate to do anything for it. Thanks to the slime there, Yuji hears it all, and he sighs as this news has spoiled the taste of his food. There were more bombs to take care of and another dragon he would have to defeat, and his slime tells him that they have a guest, and one huge tiger comes out while more surround our hero. So he just hunts them down and the next day, he goes to the nearest town and, and says that he wants to take up a tiger hunting quest because he has already completed it. The receptionist says that it was a great achievement, and she wants to add this to the resumes of all his party members, but Yuji tells her that he worked alone. The girl thinks that this was his trauma, and once he lost his party members, he thought that they never existed. She begins to cry and console him, but then the guild boss comes out, and she can tell that the tigers were hunted down just by one person, using fire magic. She asks Yuji if he was a mage, and he replies that he was just a tamer. Well, the bad news about his privacy is that the guild boss has heard about a particular tamer who was great at using magic, and just as she says this, the entire guild recognizes Yuji as the legendary hero who fought countless monsters, saved many cities, and even defeated legendary dragons on his own. And with his low profile completely gone, our hero wonders what he should do next.